recommend, guys, let, let's just give folks another minute or two. It's fairly uh, disruptive when people come and join, uh, you know, and, and I do imagine another couple may join here in the next minute or two. So, Allie, my two cents, I'd give it, I'd give it another minute, and then, and then let's go ahead and get started with the overview. Sounds good. All right, Allie, I'd say you can go ahead and kick us off whenever you're ready. All right, sounds good. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining for this presentation. Blake cannot be here today. If there's any questions I can't answer that come up later, I will certainly um, move those along to Blake, and we'll get back to everybody. But this is being recorded, so it will be available later as well. All right, um, and the control of the slides. Got a little overzealous there. All right, so as many of you know, this all came about. Um, there was a bill back in 2018, 2254, if you want to look it up, where we were doing, uh, we were asked to do wireline migration. Um, so we're merging the networks. Um, it's required by this bill. Uh, so we're working with ICN uh, for aggregation of the wireline traffic migrate the legacy landline 911 network onto the existing NG 911 network. And there's really no change to local surcharge remittance, wireline remittance to local 911 service boards. Um, not really going to go into great detail about this because we're really talking about the alley today. So what really happened is while we were working on this project, we had meetings, or Blake had meetings with CenturyLink um, a while back, and they said as soon as the wireline migration was completed, they would no longer be providing Alley. So we really had to, I guess, step back and take a look at what we're going to do. And from that, we were able to work with uh, Comtech and use a part of the contract to get Alley services statewide. Um, so currently, 90% of the PSAPs are using CenturyLink slash Entrato for their Alley. There are some limitations that are currently being faced. You're only able to download Alley extracts once a year, um, funded at the local level. Um, and like I said, we were informed that once the wireline, uh, they're no longer providing wireline trunks, they will no longer be providing that Alley information. So that statewide contract is, is it's why we're doing it, um, just because you won't have that information from CenturyLink anymore. Um, so let's see, the 911 net is going to be replaced by the Comtech Alley portal. So there are some really good benefits from us doing this. Uh, extracts can be downloaded at will. So before you were limited, you only had once a year availability. Now you can download them whenever you need them. Um, there's really no change to the display or call taker screen. So the Alley information that's in there and what you're used to seeing is what you're going to see with this new system. 
and it takes that funding off of you guys at the local level and it's now funded by HSEMD, which is great. Um, and so again, potential benefits I already kind of talked about, it's cost savings. So it's cost savings for each PSAP, you're no longer having to fund that, it's funded by us here at HSEMD. Um, it's a single system for updating and maintaining all of your Alley and MSAB records. So you do still have the option to have your own standalone system. I know that questions come up quite a bit. Um, the one main thing to consider is that the statewide system is what's going to be used for routing. So you still have to enter in information into the Comtech Alley system. And if you have a standalone system that you're paying for, you'll have to enter it in there as well. So you're going to have to do double duty and enter it into both systems because the statewide one is the one that will be used for routing. But again, if you guys want to have a standalone system, you're more than welcome to keep that and fund that on your own. Uh, this new system also has a very user-friendly interface um, for updates and discrepancy reports, unlimited access, um, no reporting restrictions like I talked about. Instead of that uh, yearly export that you were limited to, you can do it whenever you need to. Um, and they have 24-7 network support. So um, just a lot of improvement, improvements from the current way that a lot of this stuff is being handled. Um, that's really kind of the only information I had to go over. I know a lot of this is you guys were going to show the system and what it looks like for people. So I don't know if you're ready to do that. If there's any quick questions before we get into that demo that anyone wants me to answer. Hey folks, this is uh, Greg Lather from Comtech, and uh, I, I manage uh, our Next Generation 911 programs. And um, so, you know, Ali, thanks for running through that. It was great, uh, great summary of, of the, the potential benefits here. You know, as, as Ali mentioned, I think the key takeaway that I want to make sure folks are clear on this particular group is clear on is, you know, um, all all PSAPs will will need to begin updating and maintaining records through the Comtech Ally system, um, and uh, I just, you know, I want to make sure that that's that's a clear understanding, and and obviously, uh, there you guys uh, use your standalone alley systems, um, and 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 just want you guys to understand that dual provisioning requirement, um, if, if you do choose to maintain that. So, um, are 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 folks clear on that? Are there any you know questions or concerns? I, I think this is this is the appropriate time to to vet any questions or concerns um, that may exist around that. Yeah, this is Diane Seifert, and I'm with South Central Iowa Regional 911, and I do the database for seven counties in Iowa. And um, part of the telcos that send me their updates, I update their records in the west side of it also, um, where CenturyLink and some of the bigger ones, they, they feed it there, but they also send me the updates. Um, moving forward on that, um, I, I've asked this, but on the form, and the small telcos are coming back with a question to me on it, um, on the CSP user request, um, should they put me as one of their Alley user accounts and then also as the authorized vendor so that I can go in there and update what I do for them now? Yeah, I actually think that's a perfect arrangement. Our system allows for um, uh, users uh, from the uh, the telephone number owner, uh, as well as vendors that they can assign to manage those records on their behalf. So, so we can absolutely create that type of um, user scenario for you. Okay, perfect. There's about five of them, and I told them to kind of hold off and so I understand it better, and I knew today that kind of would be be given the opportunity to ask the question. So on, on the form then, is that basically the only two places that I need to put my information is under the Alley user account and then the authorized vendor? Would that be it? Uh, Michael Mihelich from Comtech, are, are you on here? I, I believe that is a true statement, but if you could confirm. 
Yeah. So this um, is, oh, go ahead, Michael. Sorry. Go ahead, Madison. That's fine. Um, so if you're going to be acting as a vendor for a, another carrier, on that carrier's form, they should indicate if they do want anyone at their company to have access and if they do want any users to our Alley database. But otherwise, in the bottom right of that form, there's going to be a spot where they can indicate the vendor and they should indicate your company as the vendor. And then if you turn in a user form, that's where you'll be able to indicate all of the vendors that, or all of the users at your company that you'd like to have um, accounts created for. So that way we're able to keep the contacts from your company and the contacts from this company purchasing your services um, separate. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just me who does it. So um, I need to do a separate CSP user form because I'm doing all the PSAP user forms also because I uh, I keep the MSEG also updated. So I have to fill okay. out one for every single PSAP, which is fine. I'm working on that. But then also I just wanted to make sure I didn't miss something on the CSP one. Yeah, for clarity, I would keep it separate. Um, and if you do have any right. questions, um, that email that's included on the form, NG Data Services, uh, mm -hmm. you're always welcome to send any questions or send the form and confirm that it's filled out properly and we'll help work you through any issues you run into. Okay, that sounds great. Um, sorry, just another question. Currently, I send their router, a router file through to Entrado through WinSkip. Is there a way <laughs> that I can not do that through the state, new statewide alley and I can just manually go in there and make their change? Absolutely. So through the alley, and we can show you this today, you have the option to submit in that same file through the web UI. You can just drop the file in the actual website, or you can do one-off changes manually to the record. Okay. All right. That sounds great. That actually would probably be easier. So. Okay, thank so you. So we've got a couple good comments, or excuse me, questions in the comment section. Let's let's run through those. Uh, Sharice asks, what is the turnaround time between when we update the local database and when it will be seen in the state database? So those are two separate and distinct actions. Um, there There is no push from one to the other. Um, so so it would be, you would see updates in the, in the state database when um, you go in and interact with the Comtech Alley system to make your updates, and those are made in near real time. Sharice, does that help on that question? Okay, I'm going to take those. Yes, we also have a question from Alex at Shelby County. For those of us that have standalone alley systems, I just want to clarify that existing data will be added to the new system and uh, will not have to update those when we switch over. Uh, Madison, can you help us with that process? I, I, I believe that we will um, uh, look for a bulk load file to do the initial loading of the Comtech system. I'm actually going to pass that one to Michael. So, um, so you have, you have a standalone system, and you want to clarify the existing data will be added to the new system. So the way we're doing it in Iowa is we are – uh, getting all the MSAC data from any of the sources. So most of it's going to come from CenturyLink. Um, it sounds like most of you folks have your data, have the data as well in the CenturyLink system, which is good. So we should get all of this MSAC data from CenturyLink. We're going to bulk load all that data into the Comtech Alley database system. All of the um, Alley records, the phone number records with the customer information. We're asking every cust every telephone customer to submit their data um, to us uh, directly. We're, so we're not going to take what CenturyLink has in their database. We're asking for every carrier um, or base entity that loads uh, telephone number records into any of the systems today. We're asking those individuals to basically take everything that is in the CenturyLink database that they manage and, and load them 
um, anew into the ComTech Alley database system. The reason we do that is because it helps us uh, a, a, an enormous amount to ensure that we have the proper ownership of the records because the based off of who is submitting those records into the database kind of immediately locks them into who owns them, who is managing them currently. Um, if, if we bulk load all of the alley records from the existing database into our own database, um, well, there's really two problems with that. One is the ownership issue. Uh, we just put them in there, but we don't necessarily know who owns what and who's supposed to be managing what. Um, not as cleanly as we do when the folks just in, independently input them directly. Um, and the second issue is there ends up being a lot of um, stale or, or um, you know, bad data that part of moving to a new system helps kind of shake out. Is uh, you can uh, when you're inputting the new data, hopefully folks kind of say, "Oh, I don't need to put those ten records in there. I don't even know why they're in the old database." So um, it does shake loose a lot of the um, stale, old, however you want to say it, information. Um, so we don't end up putting a lot of bad data back in the old system. So um, to answer that question directly again, just to, to make sure that I made that point. Anyone who manages telephone number records in the database, be it the carrier themselves, a third party company they work with, or a PSAP person who is loading records directly, um, whoever that is that loads records today in the CenturyLink system is going to need to reload all their data into the Comtech system. The alley records specifically, the MSAG we will get from CenturyLink and load. So Michael, there was a there was a follow-on question from Alex here. Uh, so that's something you're going to reach out to the local telephone companies, or something we should start gathering uh, when it's time to migrate. And I believe we have already started outreach to the local telephone companies. Yeah. So we, um, I think uh, I was uh, there has been a meeting recently where we kind of went through this. We've sent out several emails to the to the carriers directly informing them of this change. So they 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 should all be well aware. Um, and of course, you folks uh, again in special situation where you may be loading records as a PSAP on behalf of carriers into databases, which um, you know this meeting is kind of serving as a as a as that kind of notice as well. Um, and so we if we should all the carriers that we were made aware of by the state should have been informed several different times by now that that this is happening, and we're working with them to get them all onboarded. Um, so I wouldn't think that you need to go and. Um, and talk to them, but it certainly wouldn't hurt. If you want to check with them, make sure that they've been made aware. Um, if they haven't, you could certainly kick back any contact information to us because, you know, we're working through some, um, as as with any large outreach like this, some, some of the contact information we have is out of date. Um, uh, so it, if you want to check, that's great. It's a good double check, um, but we are also working through all of our contact information and should be making every carrier aware of this change that they need and the process that they're going to need to reload all of their alley data into the new system. Okay, great. Thanks, Michael. Um, okay, so let me go back real quick. There was a there was a follow on question um, from Sharice about uh, the timing of dual provisioning. Um, and the question is, okay, so just to clarify, dual provisioning is real time. I, so more specifically on that, uh, the updates made in the Comtech Alley system are done in, will, will appear in near real time. Uh, the dual load process of updating your standalone Alley and updating the Comtech system are independent processes. And Craig, I can just add to that that um, as with any alley transition, there is a period of dual provisioning. Uh, the the purpose being that um, at least from the from two statewide data sets, this current CenturyLink and Trotto data set and the Comtech data set, uh, we will send out notification and we will start dual provisioning. The beginning of that dual provisioning is really just to ensure that you've got all the people that should be making updates in the new system that they're they're capable of doing that, so that's to ensure that all the data is flowing correctly into the new system, and and you know they 
anyone who's loading data into the current system is now forked so that they can continue to load the current system but are also sending those updates into the new system. And so that's just to ensure, you know, there's several reasons you do that. You want to make sure that they're getting their updates in there, work through any problems that each carrier may have, any, any single entity that loads records. And then the other part is that as you're transitioning PSAPs, you need to have the capability, just like any technical solution, you always want to have a backup plan. So if we go to transition a single PSAP when we're doing all these transitions and for whatever reason something happens and that there's an issue, you want to be able to fall back to the old data set um, and so that, you know, if it's something big happens or who knows, an, an emergency it could occur where we just need to stop what we're doing and roll it back quickly so that you folks can uh, effectively manage that emergency situation. So we that's another reason we dual provision these databases for as long as we do so that we have that ability to roll back in case of whatever comes. You know, you always want to have a plan B. Um, and then the third, this third part with your sallies, um, you essentially load the data in your system today, and you are, if you want to continue to do that, you can. You're, you will essentially be having to load your database. If you currently load anything to the CenturyLink database, you'll have to continue to do that, and you will have to also load things to this new ComTech database. So you'll be doing basically triple provisioning um, for a, a period of time until we've completed all the PSAP cuts, at which point you can stop loading the um, CenturyLink Alley database. It will go away. Uh, and then you'll just be, quote unquote, dual provisioning your data set, your database, your on-site database, and the ComTech database continuing. Um, as Greg said, that will be used specifically for routing at that point. And, and guys, if it isn't abundantly clear, part of our part of our purpose of this is is to make you guys aware of that potential extra work and um, and and give you a a demonstration and an overview of the Comtech Alley system in, in case you may want to move uh, to that, move away from your standalone and and uh, reduce that additional loading process that you would you would have to go through if you maintain your Sally. So some additional questions coming in. Uh, Debbie from GRM Networks um, had a question. Uh, I understand in the forum I would add SCI as an authorized vendor and add her information under the Alley user account. Debbie, is SCI Sorry. loading records on your behalf? Is that what I'm interpreting there? Yes, that is correct. Okay, good. Then, then, yep, we can uh, go ahead and fill that out accordingly on that data collection sheet for the user accounts, and we should be able to set that up no problem. And then, Debbie, you had an additional question about loading records into Entrato, and I assume you'd continue to send those same records to Comtech and SCI. I, uh, that is a true statement. Okay. Question from Iowa County. Who do we tell the local telcos to contact? Uh, please use that uh, Comtech NG uh, dig team email, and if that, it's uh, ng data dash services at comtechtel.com. Madison just posted it in the chat as well. There we go. And and Madison, if you wouldn't mind, maybe send that out in an email that we can distribute so folks have it in their inboxes. Apologize, that didn't get Absolutely. into. Absolutely. Yeah, and it may, is it is it later on in the deck too? It, it may be at the back of the deck as well. If not, I'll make sure that um, all the invitees to this meeting get an email just with that information as well as our user form so they can kind of look through that in case they hadn't seen it yet. Fantastic, thank you. 
Okay, Mark from BV County. Does a list of LEC and CLECs that have been contacted exist where we can see if our LEC and CLEC is listed versus reaching out to them? I can speak to that. Um, okay. Yes, there, we do have a list of all the companies that we've reached out to. You're also welcome to send this NG Data Services email, uh, an email and just say, hey, you know, I'm with this company, has anyone reached out? And I can go through and confirm if we've reached out and if we've received um, our user forms back. And Greg, I think one thing we might want to do is just run that. Th we, you know, we can provide the list, the the overall list to um, uh, Blake, and then Blake can share that as he sees fit. I just I just wanted that, just because it's contact information, we always want to be sensitive to folks and just make sure. And I understand the ask is simple, um, but we'll we can run that through the state, I think, and just have them share that as they see. Uh, fit. Excellent. Thanks, Michael. Okay, uh, another question from Iowa County. Will local telcos still be sending us updates, uh, still be sending updates to us then, or will they just go to you? Also, we don't submit to CenturyLink unless there is something else that uh, HSEMD is doing. Okay, so if you guys maintain your own standalone system, then any local telcos will need to continue to submit to you guys so that those records can get into your local system. Um, however, if you decide to solely use the Comtech uh, statewide alley system, then those telcos could go directly into the Comtech statewide system and, and would no longer need to communicate to you guys directly. Does that make sense, Iowa County? Excellent, excellent. Okay, folks, uh, so that covers all the questions. The next stage of the presentation was that we were going to give a, a quick demo of our system, going to get a look at the interface you guys would be interacting with to, to update and maintain records in our system. Any further questions before we move on to that portion? All right, great. Madison and Michael, if you guys wouldn't mind, let's go ahead and move towards the demo. Good deal. Uh, so again, my name is Michael Mihalich. I'm with uh, Comtech. Uh, I'm the uh, also work at the NG programs. Um, Madison is the supervisor who works um, with me, and um, she she manages the the data integrity group, which is the team that you folks will be working uh, with day day in and day out as far as Ali. Um, efforts go. Uh, if you're going to be using our alley in any way, those would be the team that, that would be the team that you're working with. Uh, Madison's going to help me kind of drive this. She's going to show pop the screen up. Uh, I think we can all see, at least I can see it now, Madison, the, um, the login screen for the Comtech alley DPMS. Uh, we're just going to be loading into a demo system that just has some a small amount of data just to kind of, as Greg said, kind of give you a look and feel and uh, this much more uh, ad hoc than it is kind of a prepared training or demonstration. Um, just so you folks know, as we continue to move down the path of rolling out the alley, any folks who are going to be um, using the alley as a, well, all the PSAPs will be able to get access to it from, um, because we will have all the PSAP data in there. It's required for routing purposes. Um, and so you will all get logins. Uh, the folks that need them will get logins to the system. Um, we'll be logging in as a what we call a jurisdiction user. That's the you know the PSAP folks. What your view is, um, and, and there will be a more specific training for everyone as we get closer to the um, rollout of the alley system. So you will get a much more in-depth training where you can ask very specific questions. And everything um, just so you know. But we are open to answer any questions you have today as well. So I'll go ahead and let uh, Madison log in. Um, that brings you to this home screen view. 
uh, right now is just kind of this little daily statistics. It talks about how many records that are a part of, you know, how many customer records, alley records there are in your your piece of jurisdiction. Again, this is just a demo system, so there's very few. Uh, there's total MSAG records. That's how much MSAG is there for your PSAB. Um, and then service orders and MSAG service orders processed in the last two days. That's just how many changes have occurred um, for your PSAB jurisdiction. Uh, and so then at the top there, you can see that you get have a little navigation bar. You've got um, MSAG Alley, ESN reports, runtime, and user. Um, each one of those, if you hover over them, as you can see, uh, gives you more options of um, areas to go into. Uh, so we'll just kind of start real quick. Uh, and then, in the, sorry, in the top right corner, you see uh, who is logged in is that jury test. And then you have a logout button. Um, so we'll just navigate quickly. We'll just go to the MSAC screen to kind of show you some of the simple functionality. Uh, so we'll just go to the MSAC search. And then um, this will kind of just give you a brief idea of how the uh, searching works. Um, you have this bar up at the top. You can add these um, kind of advanced search uh, that we can get into, but basically what um, Madison did right away was just click search with no criteria, and then you can see that you get the full um, information of all the MSAG data that would be associated basically by ESN to your PSAP. Um, as you can see above, uh, Madison has added a rule which lets you uh, do this much more criteria um, kind of lets you do this very um, advanced searching of of uh, any any of these fields that are available in the MSAG, and then these um, modifiers, contains, uh, doesn't contain, things like that. Um, so she's going to just throw in um, full street name contains Apple and run a search there. And that just shows you that you're going to get any street name, anything with full street name, which would include the pre- and post-directionals and the suffix, um, you're going to get anything that has Apple as any part of it. It contains the um, that string of letters in that. Um, so you see many uh, different versions of Apple um, showing up. So that's, you know, and then that uh, you can add additional rules, and then you can um, put those rules into groups, uh, which allows you to kind of do a much more specific um, searches. So here we're doing um, uh, the top group is an and statement. So you're saying the full street name contains Apple and the state equals Washington. And then a, and then a kind of a subgroup there of, uh, of the house, the low range and the high range. So this is, again, just showing off the more uh, advanced you can make it as simple or as complicated as you like, really, is what this allows for, which we find can maybe be a little daunting at first, but once you get used to it, it definitely helps you drill down to exactly what you're looking for. Um, as you can see uh, at the top left corner above the search um, results, there is an export to CSV that will allow you to um, Again, as was said in the presentation, you can you can grab your data whenever you want it. So right now, these search criteria, you can export to CSV exactly, you know, this 136 results of this advanced search that was run above. Um, you just click that button, it, it saves it to a CSV file, um, and, and you can just have that data broken out in that um, 512, uh, or in this, in this format here as, as it is. That's another nice feature that you have to just be able to get this information whenever you want it. Um, the uh, If we go back to the, well, I guess I'll just slow down there. Are there any questions so far um, as far as the, the search functionality goes or anything that we've seen so far? Okay, and feel free to interrupt me, throw something up in the chat either way. Um, we'll either, you can either stop us or we'll circle back on it and we can, you know, we're just kind of jumping around here a little bit. Um, so that's that's pretty much the search functionality. That same, this search, uh, the same search um, functionality exists on all the pages that have tables that can be searched. 
Um, so again, very, uh, very uh, advanced search capabilities to really dig down into your data. Um, up above, if we go back to the um, MSAG and uh, go to the workflow, um, you can also um, go into the MSAG change request, um, which is, is basically the way that you manage um, uh, requests that changes. So either a, a carrier may request a new MSAG um, be built, a new, you know, a new apartment goes in and they need that new MSAG with that new, you know, either an, a, one of your existing MSAGs um, may be uh, extended, the range extended to include this new address, or maybe there's a whole new street name and um, house numbers that need to be included, new construction, all those kind of things. So this is where they would go in and create that, that new MSAG change request. Um, I'm this carrier, I need this MSAG to support this, you know, these phone numbers that I'm trying to load. So they would go ahead and request it, <clears throat> and then that workflow would come to you um, to kind of approve it, and then you know, ComTech goes in and actually builds the MSAG for you, and uh, then uh, lets the carrier know that it's been completed. Um, this is also where if you were using our alley where you would request for us to create that new MSAG, you could come in and do the same thing, request a new MSAG be built, um, and we would uh, follow that workflow through, create that MSAG on your behalf, and um, let you know when it's completed. Uh, so this this is where that area is. It's kind of broken up into several parts. For the workflow, again, um, in a more in-depth training, we would go through how all of this works, but I just wanted to kind of touch on this really quickly of uh, that embedded workflow of, uh, is available here in the UI. Um, the alley discrepancy report process is very similar. Um, for a piece up, that's where you would go in and uh, create that um, discrepancy report. Uh, you know, a call came in and it had a bad address or a misroute or something like that. That's where you could come in and um, create those so that ComTech could refer them out to the carriers uh, so that they could correct their alley records or, um, you know, or we could work on a misroute or whatever it was that occurred. Um, that would allow us, again, just an embedded workflow to kind of step through uh, that process. Um, so that's really uh, that's really it for MSAG and Alley. I guess the one thing we will show that is probably very key to you folks, if we do an Alley search Madison for anything and then we go into the edit to show the comments functionality, um, so uh, part of the ComTech Alley database allows uh, the jurisdiction user, you folks, the PSAPs, um, we understand that a lot of folks use some, um, put comments on some of their um, Alley records. And so our system allows for those comments to exist. Um, so as you can see here, Madison searched for a specific Alley record, and when you found the alley record that you want to affect the comment on, um, you go to that view edit button, which she did, and um, then in this little white box, the only thing that you folks are allowed to edit on an any alley record is this 911 comment field. Um, so you can come in here, you can add whatever comment you would like to. Um, that comment can then be saved to that alley record and is only, it's only viewable and editable by a PSAP user. So if the carrier would not be in, know that this, um, they would not know that this comment was made, they would not be able to see it in any of their extracts of the alley records. Um, only the PSAP user that entered it would be able to see it. Uh, and it would be associated to this alley record within the alley. Michael, I'm going to hop in and let you know there are a couple of questions happening in the chat box. Sure. Let's take a look. Um, Debbie uh, brought up, Intrado required the E911 Sheriff's Office to request any changes. Can I make those changes now? Example, uh, house range needs to be increased. So um, you, in the Comtic Alley database, you cannot make the change, but you can uh, request the change. So you could go in where Madison just was, you could go into the MSAG change request section, you could click the request change, and you could submit the change that you want to be made, the extending the house number, uh, the, sorry, the house range. 
then Comtech would take that and say, okay, the PSAP has asked for this to be extended um, as long as it didn't uh, negatively impact any alley records, um, essentially orphan them. Uh, we would affect that change and then uh, just submit back to you and let you know that that change has been made. So um, it's really just as easy as going into that workflow, clicking a button, filling in the form, and um, clicking submit. Then we make the change and, and let you know when it's done. Uh, and then it, the question there, is there a character limit on the 911 comments field? That's a great question. Um, there is a character limit on the on the 911 comments. So in the 911 comments here, um, we're using the, I want to say the NINA reserved field in the 512 character format for NINA 2.1. And I want to say it's 60, 60 characters, give or take. It might be 63. Um, Madison, I don't know if you know that off the top of your head exactly. I don't, but I can uh, get that information for our follow-up. Yeah, I, I want to say it's 60, give or take a few characters. Um, and so that, that is a limit based off of the, the, the 512 character format in the NINA file, uh, that NINA standard format for Alley. Um, there's you know roughly 60 characters reserved for this purpose, and uh, we allow for the use of all of them in here. Um, but good question. We will follow up to make sure that my um, 60 is not drastically off. I'm pretty certain it's roughly 60. Um, but that does bring me to a question that I have for you folks. Is, is So I've seen some sample data from some of the Sally's in um, standalone databases in Iowa. And I've seen the um, some of the data. Some of it is much longer than 60 characters, which is something we would have to work with um, with you folks on. But uh, a question I have is, what is the functionality of the 911 comp? Like having a comment on an alley record, when that person calls 911, does that data display at the time of call, or is it just in your database and you can look it up or do something with it after the fact? Because uh, it's just a question I have that kind of comes into the functionality of that comments field because having it display as part of the call, like a query and response directly from the Alley database is, is much different than just having new folks be able to log into the UI and look at the comment itself. Um, for an example, Madison, if you just click save on this comment, okay, it does display with the call. So if we go... If we go back to search and that, or, you know, if you go to that record that you just affected that, and I think you can just kind of view it, um, you know, you could you can look it up in the database whenever you want. It would be part of the extract now that's associated to that alley record, right? You can just click that little button and see it. Um, but if you folks are getting that at time of call, um, that's a different, that's a different ball game. That's something that is, um, a little not, that's not speci not necessarily standard with the alley formats that are being used today in Iowa. So we'll, we will take that away and, and ponder that as far as um, if that's the desired functionality. I, I mean, if it would display as the time of call, sure. Um, but we'll have to take that away and, and make sure that we can help, help provide parity to that functionality today. Um, Okay, so that's the that that touches on the MSAG, that touches on the alley, some of the workflow, um, and uh, some of the uh, and the 911 comments functionality as as it appears today in the system. Um, if we continue going through the ribbon at the top, um, the other options within alley. Uh, Uh, Madison, can you hover over Alley? Um, we did the search. Um, you can search service order, which allows you to just um, touch on, uh, you know, carriers submitting files. You can see if they submitted a change and maybe it had an error, um, things like that. That's really just all the things that have tried to process, and you can see the function of, you, you know, these were all inserts. That was a change. Did it have an error code, the far left corner, um, if you're really diligent about verifying 
um, that they're submitting their data or changes or how many errors they might be having. Um, some of the other uh, the other functionality under Alley uh, is um, I think it's a search service order and then workflow and error codes. So the workflow we talked about the Alley DR workflow that's where you go in and put the um, miss routes and things like that. And the error codes is just, if you're curious, if you did look at service orders, the error codes table just shows you what that, you know, if it shows a 763, it just shows you what that code means, um, which is just more information. It's most That's mostly carrier specific as they're the ones loading the data, but if any of you folks are loading information on their behalf, this would be helpful to you as well to know, I got this certain error, what does that mean? Oh, I put the wrong uh, company ID in or something like that. Um, so then scrolling across the top again, the ESN section um, allows you to search ESNs that are part of your jurisdiction, and that'll just show you um, the information associated to them. Uh, some of these fields aren't necessarily used. The, the descriptions can be used or not. Um, the county ID is really just who's that county ID uh, is associated to that ESN. And then you've got um, the things that might be more important are the law fire EMS and the fact that it's a shell record. So law fire EMS would be, uh, you know, for this is obviously demo data, but if, if this was real data, that would be your um, the ELTs or the English language translations, basically the, the law fire EMS, that the information that shows at time of call in the alley spill. So that might be, you know, such and such a P, PD, such and such a fire department, such and such an EMS uh, ambulance service. So those are always associated to the ESN, um, and that's what displays at time of call. So you, would, you essentially can kind of come in here and see what's in there today. We, you may have already seen the emails coming from us. We are validating all your ESNs and um, ELT information uh, right now currently, so all of that will get loaded into the Iowa Alley database and be there for at time of call to be delivered to you folks. Um, so that's pretty much all there is um, for the ESN information. Uh, the reports section, you just get a handful of things that you can download here. Um, as we said previously, you can get your full alley and MSAG whenever you want. Um, you get the button there at the top that download all customer records. That's essentially all the alley records. You just click that any day. It's updated every day. Um, I think at midnight or roughly around then, and you can just download all that data. Uh, you can get your alley records every day. Um, and then you can get changes. So if you want to have like deltas that you're feeding into something, you can pick a begin date and an end date, and generate that file to just get the things that may have been updated within a certain interval. Um, and then the MSAG changes, same thing there. You can get uh, the, if you want to see what MSAG updates have been made within the last week, two weeks, month, um, you can do the same thing there. Just pick a uh, date and time interval and generate that file. Those will and those will all generate, and you can download them ad hoc whenever you need them. Um, the runtime section uh, this allows you uh, the bid history is where you can go. So let's say you had a call a couple moments ago and it was a, a misroute and an NRF. Um, this is a demo system, it's not tied into any kind of runtime system, so there's no data here, but essentially you get a call um, and you want to create an LEDR from it, or you just want to see the details of what happened. Um, you could come in here, you could just click search, or you could put in some, uh, you know, you, you took down the, on the note what the phone number was. You could, you know, pick one of the rules that is the Annie, and you could put that in there and refine your search. So you click search, you would see a list of all the information, and then from that, you you know, basically it's like every alley display field that should have been generated and provided to you at time of call. Um, it just shows that list, so if something, maybe maybe your system kind of garbled the information, you want to see what it is in the database, what should have been sent, um, you could come in here and do that. Or if you had a call that, um, you know, the person moved, but the address is still the old address, you could come in here, click search, find that, that call, and then there will be a button there to generate Alley DR from that um, from that specific call. That way, you don't have to fill in all that information. It just auto populates it from the call that happened, which just is kind of a time saving thing for folks. 
Um, so that's there for you folks to use um, at your leisure um, whenever you need to for any reason you might have. Um, and then there, there's a little user settings section that's just kind of, I think, essentially the only thing you can really change is how many results come back on a search. And then the jobs are where some of the um, where some of the reports or extracts that you run, um, they go to the, the job queue. And then so they'll show up in the queue um, as they run in the background and then we'll move up into the completed section when they're done where you can just click the button to download them. So that's just kind of a just a place where they go for some of the larger extracts um, just to you know keep the system from being inundated with a lot of heavy data requests or extracts. And that's pretty much it. Um, you know, again, we just kind of touched on everything, but uh, didn't really go too in depth on anything. We're happy to take questions if folks have more, more that they want to see of um, anything or they have any specific questions for us, please feel free to ask them. This is Diane from SBI. I was just wondering, is there a misroute section? Because sometimes with the boarding counties, they the call will go to a different county than it should. Sure. Um, so Madison, if you go into the uh, Alley DR, we can kind of show what that would look like from a misroute, like where you would want to report a misroute. So let's just create a new one. Um, again, there's an easier way to do this. You would just find the call and click it and it would just populate this. But so on an LEDR, you essentially have your discrepant data, which is in the area that Madison is at right now, and you've got your correct data, you know, what, what it should be. So in this situation, um, you would fill this all in. Uh, you know, you'd have the phone number, all the customer information, etc. And then you would fill in the the proper information, which in this case would probably be the same data, um, but in the uh, upper section, you would fill in um, the issue, which is uh, you would say routed to PSAP, and you would put in your PSAP, and then you would, from this drop down, you would get, uh, you know, the list of all the PSAPs that are in your, uh, you know, there. So you would just pick up uh, you know, you would pick from that list what the proper PSAP would be. And then uh, and then you would just um, submit that, right? And in the con you'd put in the comments, uh, misroute this call should go to the neighboring jurisdiction or whatever would be your specific situation. Maybe it's a known thing. Uh, maybe it's an, uh, they need to move their, their uh, maybe you would put up here that they need to actually move their, MSAG to this other MSAG, maybe it's a, a, an MSAG that people get confused that are between two counties or something. Maybe it is just uh, the all the data is right, but the call is coming to you incorrectly, you know, with wireless calls and, pro you know, probably the wrong cell tower or something that they would have to resolve. Um, any any situation like that, whatever the, whatever the reason is, we will work to figure that out. Um, but that would be how you would submit a misroute, is just use this form to tell us that this specific call, you know, either it needs to have this data change to go correctly or just came to me and needs to go somewhere else um, or needed to go somewhere else. And then ComTech will dive into why that happened, get it to the right carrier to resolve, you know, whatever the issue is, either updating their data or fixing their wireless routing, um, you know, whatever the, the cause is that the root causes that needs to be resolved so that we can drive that home with the carrier themselves. So that that's kind of the overall idea of this form is just that's where you would come in and submit those type of requests so that ComTech could work with you and the carrier to resolve those misroute issues. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions? All right, uh, Greg, I guess we'll hand it yeah. back off to you. Awesome. Thanks, Michael. Great job. I really appreciate it. Um, guys, so I think that uh, with that, you know, I, I think to me there's there's a two uh, next steps that, that we want to have on our minds. One, if you guys um, 
are interested in and do want to move away from your standalone system um, and, and begin to use the Comtech uh, Alley system exclusively, please notify Blake and Alley. We, we've got a communication chain going with them uh, for any PSAPs that want to go through that process, and we'll make sure and get, uh, get you guys uh, the training support and, and get you scheduled accordingly based on those migrations. So, so uh, if you are interested in making that migration, please contact uh, Allie and Blake and let them know. And then um, secondly, uh, as, as Michael and Madison have discussed, we'll be doing more in-depth training as we get closer to the onboarding process. So please just you know, be ready for that and look for communication around additional training and onboarding steps that, that we'll be helping you guys do. Allie, anything you want to add or, or touch on before we wrap? Um, the only other thing I'll add on is there was mention about seeing if people could get a list of the telcos that we contacted. Um, once you send that over to Blake and I, me and Blake will have a discussion and figure out the best way we want to um, disseminate that information. In the meantime, if you have a specific question about a telco in your area, just go ahead and shoot us an email and ask us. Um, that might be the easiest way if someone has specific questions for us to answer those for you without giving out information we don't want to share. So. Excellent. Well, I thank you all very much for the time. We look forward to working with you guys uh, over the next few months as we uh, bring this project forward. Certainly contact uh, any of us um, with questions that uh, Data Integrity Unit email is has been distributed, so please don't hesitate if you guys have any questions or want to talk further. <coughs> All right, thanks everybody. Have a great day.